Hi Floss Tube, I'm Lori and welcome to Once Upon a Stitch. Today is Saturday, September 30th, 2023. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning and I hope to get through this video in one take <sighs> because I do not know how to edit. And if I say something that I don't like, I usually stop it, delete it and start all over. I don't know if you hear the coughing in the background. Um, my husband got sick yesterday. Um, we think it's just a sinus infection and a cough, but he will test later and see if he has anything worse than that, or he might go to urgent care and see if he can get something, like an antibiotic or something. Sometimes they give it and sometimes they don't. But um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope you see something that you like. And if you're a returning viewer, I'm so glad you're here. Um, first, I just want to start with thank yous. Thank you to everybody who, <clears throat> who sent a message, um, who put our family in their prayers, who, and those that don't pray, that's fine. They were in your thoughts. So that means as, so much to me. Um, a lot of messages that I read brought me to tears um, and because I just cry really easy now. There was a time when I was going through a menopause, I guess, I just couldn't cry. No matter what I saw or heard, I just couldn't cry. And then one day it came back and it hasn't stopped. Um, but anyway, I just go on tangents now because I have only children to speak to most of the time. So I'm, I'm glad to be here and share everything. Um, one viewer um, wrote this in her part of her message to me, and I thought it was so great that I just wanted to share it. She said, your greatest contribution to the world may not be something you do, but someone or something you raise. And I think the fact that I'm raising awareness of Menkes, which is the copper deficiency in children, um, is what maybe what she was speaking of and or raising someone that like my son and his wife, I don't raise his wife, but I raise my son. They're both um, doing everything, everything possible that they can for Libby to have as full of a life that she possibly can. So, um, so thank you for that. I've received a couple of cards in the mail and this one, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, I can't read the name of who signed it. This is the card. And if, if you're the one that sent it to me, I could read the sentiment very clearly, but I couldn't read the name and I'm not going to show the name on camera, but thank you so much. But if you tell me who you are, I can thank you personally. I even asked a few people, I said, can you make out this name? And we thought it was a few things, but then they were missing letters. And so, um, and then um, D Abrams sent me also a card. You're on my mind. And she wrote a lovely sentiment in it. So thank you, D. My friend Pat, which I didn't miss, mention in my last video, she came over with dinner one day and I was just like in shock. Um, I don't expect anything and a card or a, a message is like above and beyond what people do for me. And when she came over with dinner, I was, like I said, I was shocked. And I didn't want it, I, I wanted it, mention it because she's my friend and she did this for me, but then I didn't want people to feel like they had to do this. So I didn't mention it. And then I said, oh, I should have mentioned it just to thank her, even though I thanked her a few times. Um, I And then like a week later, my friend Alva came and brought me dinner, brought us dinner. So I thanked them from the bottom of my heart and Pat came by again when did you come back? Thursday, when I had the three, three children, the twins and Caleb, and surprised me again. So thank you, and it's not necessary, but thank you so much. It was well appreciated. 
The next card I received was from Dottie, and she is stitching Scotty on YouTube, and she sent me um, a little card that says, Life's tangles unravel better with help from a friend. Be devoted to one another from Romans 12.10. A little card like this. Oops. And she wrote a lovely um, sentiment inside. So thank you so much, Dottie. And um, my friend Kathy and Peter, who gave me this bee skep. Let's see, all the way down here. I have scissors and that way. <laughs> I should have brought it here. And I purchased some their wooden um, bowls and stuff. And I keep things here all the time. And I, and I love it. Um, they sent, she sent me a card and Peter made this little bee skip and I was so moved by it. I could hang it on a bag, but I don't think I want to do that. I want to put it, hang it somewhere where I'm going to see it all the time. So, um, and she wrote me the most beautiful card as well and, um, and a special saying from the, the uh, Bible, Psalm 105, 4 through 5. So, um, Kathy and Peter, thank you so very much. She's the Carolina cross-stitcher. I had mixed up her um, YouTube channel with somebody else. She's the Carolina cross-stitcher, Kathy and Peter, who does beautiful woodworking. Um, if you need any spools or hives for scissor holders, I totally recommend him. Okay, so um, a few people mentioned this, so I thought I'd bring it back upstairs. It was downstairs in the living room for, hello, fall, y'all. It's autumn in the village. Um, a few people have tagged me that they've started it, so I thought I'd um, bring it back up. And show it one more time for anybody who's new. This is just a frame from Hobby Lobby that I, um, let's say, magnets, oops, sheet metal, lacing. And then I just, when I put it downstairs, I make sure it's <laughs> straight and evenly spaced. But um, that's my piece. I believe it was on 25 Count Lugana Ivory. Two over two by Stony Creek. Okay, I had no um, fully finishes this. I'm gonna just scoot you a tad. Um, any fully finishes this month, but I had some finishes that I'll share with you as I um, go through everything. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, what have I been stitching? Well. Um, this month was ABC Cinco in the Magazine Monthly Challenge group. And basically, they take out one letter of the alphabet and you have to put something you're going to stitch in for that letter. So I, I, I put some a different color ink and it's smeared there. But I made my total board. I made it and I completed each letter of the alphabet. And this... This year they took out the T, so um, I was able to do that. And then they also had an acrostic for that month, which I managed to do. This time the acrostics, usually I put three hours, which I usually accomplish in one day, um, usually in the evening. Um, but I'm so glad I put one hour for this one and the 24 hours of cross-stitch acrostic um, because some nights that's all I got in was that one hour because um, I had children over the house for the last three weeks every weekday. Um, so some days I was a little tired. <laughs> anyway, what else? Oh, Whipco. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to finish my Whipco board this year. Absolutely. I know it for a fact. So, but I'm not going to be upset about it. I, I've learned from this experience. I thought like when I put in 30 hours or 36 hours, I expected to do 
a couple of hours every month and it by the end of the year it would add up but because of new starts that i've had and things that i wanted to get done things got pushed to the back burner there's one piece on this thing that i haven't touched all year yet and will i i don't know but I so I've learned from my whip go board. So the only thing I've colored in since we've last been together was this um, block. And that was the New England sampler that I did hit 36 hours on it. I'm having fun with that. And I want to keep stitching it, but technically I shouldn't stitch it anymore because I should be putting some hours in some of the other ones. Anyway, so what I've learned from whip go is not to be so aggressive in making your goals. Put a project, whether it's a whip or a new start, put it in. Now, be careful. Now, I was gonna do a, a whip go board with all new starts, but that I can't do because when I'm gonna start things, I wanna be able to start something if I need it ahead of time. And I wanna wait for whip go to tell me when to start something. So that I don't think I could do. But if I have enough projects to put in for a whip go, I'll put it in and maybe it will be to work on it for two days that month. And when it's cold, I can do that. So I have to, uh, whip go is still a process for me to, um, last year I, I met all the goals, but maybe it was different. I don't know. I don't know if I had less babysitting to do. I had more time. But like I said, there was one thing I didn't touch at all. Okay, so what have I been stitching? I have a ton here to show you, which I'm glad. Because the last time we were together was um, September 8th. And so since September 8th, I have stitched. This is the New England sampler that I met my would go goal on. This is what it looks like, but the sampler company. Designs by Brenda Keys. And it's a nice picture, but it doesn't do it justice as a picture. I think me seeing it in person is what made me want to stitch it. So what have I stitched since we've been, since that day? Okay, I think I put in this, I started the grass here because I wanted to see where the water ended. And then I started coming down here and I stitched the tree and I think I did the bird as well. So what I think I'm going to do next is I'm gonna bring down the border and make sure that everything aligns. And here's the piece. Isn't it beautiful? Those colors of those houses is what, is what drew me to this pattern and wanting to stitch it. This is stitched on a 28 count golden tan Lugana. So I don't have that much left, but I did meet my goal on it. So I do want to, but I do want to pick it up again. And I don't even know if I scheduled it for um, next month's October stitching. Uh, I'm working on that right now. Like what things am I going to stitch? What um, patterns work for the acrostics? The 24 hour acrostic usually comes out the last day of the month. So that would be today sometime. The next one I stitched on was Bygone Stitches Quaker Christmas 2. And I put in the bells, these little motifs. The tree was in, I believe, and the word the. This is the last time you've seen this. And so that's the top border of how wide it will be. And it's only two colors. It is, um, the green is called Brethren Blue, um, but it looks almost like a greenish color to me. Bring it in a little closer so you can see it. And one of the letters that I stitched to make this work was S for song titles. 
And the other color um, that they called for for the pattern was Current by Gentle Arts. But I decided to do it with an anchor color of um, 00020. So uh, this is the color. Because it required a lot of skeins of um, the Gentle Arts and I didn't want to spend that much money. So uh, one day when Needle Workers was open, before they closed, I had help from one of the employees there. I just thought of her name and it just fell out of my head. Oh, it'll come back. She helped me find um, a matching color in the anchor threads. Okay. <laughs> the projects don't fit in the bag anymore. The next one I stitched was from the Scarlet House, and that's a perfect world. And I had missing all these trees up here and the deer, and I really wanted to get down into here, but I decided to go back and fill in some of it. I, this was, you know, night stitching because um, ABC Cinco is um, one night that you stitch that alphabet. But I think in the month, I might've gotten two days in it because it's just, like I do a two day rotation. So when I try to do the alphabet, I try to put something in for two letters so I can get my two days. Some uh, projects worked and some of them I had to find something else. So I did the two deer and the tree. So I think, let's see what do I have left here. You can see better than I. Um, I have another tree, two trees and a bird. So a tree up here, a tree down here. So I think that's what I'll um, finish. And then I can say the top is done and then it's a matter of filling in the flowers and the background, which I will be doing because that's what one of the things that really attracted me to the piece. This is stitched on a 28 count heritage, Lugana, two over two. I've been also trying to plan what I'm going to start next year. And I'll do a separate video on that because um, my friend Dee came up with the idea of starting 12 ornaments in next year, like at one every month. So I said I would participate in it, but it didn't have to be Christmas ornaments. It could be Halloween ornaments, Easter, anything smaller than a six by six, a pillow, anything smaller than a six by six was her uh, thought process. The next sampler is uh, the Red House sampler. And I'm stitching this on an 18 count Rustico. And um, I think I chose O for one of these because the gentleman, which you, I haven't stitched yet, but he's offering her flowers. So that was for my O. So what I stitched was I finished the tree. I started his pants and I did some of the grass underneath and I don't know I thought it was a squirrel but it looks like a really long tail and it could it be a monkey <laughs> I think it's a squirrel but um I thought the tail was rather long so that's what I worked I finished put all the finished the leaves um I think she was done the last time I can't really remember and then I stitched into here. So I do have quite a bit. I have the house to do yet, which is awfully large. And I have to finish the border. Um, this is stitched two over one, 18 count rustico. And in some sections, I find it very thick, dense, because it's, so the house, I'm sure it's gonna feel that way too. Um, again, here's the picture. But, 
slow and steady wins the race. Oh, there's some here. Okay. This is a Whipco Gold that I did need on this project, and it's Kringles by Little House Needlework. My goal was to complete this row of rooms and the sign, and you can't see it here, but there's two snowflakes here. That was my goal for, for Kringles. Then um, my friend Dina was working on this very diligently. And she was, she had it planned out that she was going to finish it by, first I think it was December. Then she, I think, mapped it to November. So she had time to possibly frame it to be up on the house, in her house uh, for Christmas. Well, she blew me out of the water. She finished it, it's framed. So like now, like I have nobody to stitch it with. Are you guys stitching this too? Anyway. So I did meet my goal on Whipco, and then I started the next row. So since you've last seen it, I've stitched the chandelier. Now, the chandelier calls for a virassois with one other thread. And the virassois, let me see if I can show it to you. Here. Up on the tree here, you can see the stars. It's done in a virassois. I found it very thick. I don't know if you can see it, put it a little bit closer. And I wasn't crazy about it, but I used it. But for the chandeliers, because there was so much of it, I picked up a rainbow gallery. And it's not in here because I have it in a box. But I picked up a rainbow gallery thread. And the, you, you do one strand of the thread. Um, and then you do one strand of the floss. So uh, I, it, in real life, it does not spark, well, shine. It shines. The chandelier and I like it better it's not so pronounced so that so I did this row of the chandelier these sweets and I finished the bottom sweets so I have the center I think they're gingerbread men yes gingerbread men in here and then I have another chandelier on this side and some more on this side so am I pushing for a finish this year? I don't know. If I'm feeling it, I will. But, oh, let me show you the whole piece. This is stitched on a 28 count Springfield Sage Lugana. There, now it's in. On my tippy toes. Two over two. I always forget to say that. Um, almost everything I stitch on is two threads over one or two, but always usually two threads. Okay. Oh, on this one, uh, what did I use? Oh, in some of the, um, I don't remember. I, I want to get into what I used the letters for and stuff, but it's too confusing. And I, if I if I remembered, I should have wrote it on a piece of paper and stuck it on every one. But I don't want to waste the time to look it up and tell you. Oh, I used this for this letter, but I finished all the letters, so that's all you need to know. The next one I picked up was Plum Street. Always remember. And to me. This is a remembrance for 9-11. Um, I started it on 9-11 last year. Unfortunately, I didn't finish it this year on 9-11. Um, so I finished the house since you've last seen it and all the flowers that were left here. I believe it was th these three, four, two flowers and the bud and this bud and the leaves. And then I started on the uh, grass section. Oh, that side, because the hue snack was, hue snap was mainly on that side. So I decided to start the bottom. And maybe I'll finish that side before I come back and tackle. There's another eagle and flowers on this side. Okay. And what am I stitching this on? Stormy night. 25 count, 
25 count. Um, it's Stormy Night. It's stamped on this side and plain on, on the back. See my back. Um, so yeah, I love this piece. And so I'm looking forward to completing this. This The whip go goal on this is to finish it this year. I hope to do it. I have it scheduled to be worked on in October. So I'm hoping in the by December I'll finish it. I can't believe how many projects I have here. Okay. Um, this is the next in the series of Stony Creek. It's uh, winter in the village, and it is being stitched on a 28 count ivory Lugana. So it'll be a tad smaller than the other one. And I just started on uh, a little bit more on the toy house, toy store house. <clears throat> and I actually, I filled in this section in here. Now, what I did was, which I don't usually do, I stitched the red, the red dots first, and I dragged my thread. Then I stitched the white, and when I held it up to the light, I saw the thread going across. So I, I pulled it all out, and I had to get that red un, out from under the white, and then I did, what did I do? Did I do pin stitches? Yes, I individually did pin stitches on the back. So the thread would not show because it's a light fabric, light colors, it, it did show. Um, this is the start of an awning. And then I finished the section in here. I didn't get too much done on this. This was just one night of stitching in the month. I did meet my whip goat goal and that was to complete two houses. And all the outlining has been done up to, up until like before this next house because I have to fill in the section in here before I can outline. And I had outlined the snowman and the po uh, light post. So that's where I am. Let me just fold it so you can see it better. And I can't believe I wasted this much material at the top. Sometimes I cut it short and then sometimes I'm like, what are you, I, if I would have brought this, if this was up higher, I could have got a second one in here. I guess it depends where I, how much space I cut to finish. I might be able to get another one in, but my smaller project, most likely. So that's Winter in the Village by Stony Creek. but then I love them all. It's Long Dog Opening Gambit, which I'm stitching for my son, Michael. He plays chess. And I use this for L, but not for Long Dog, but for stitching the last page. <laughs> I'm on the last page. I'm so excited. Right. I don't know if I'll finish it in one um, in one more rotation or two, but I will finish it this year. And that is, here we are. Let's, let me show you what I've stitched. Where are we on this side? Okay, Michael asked me, there's, <clears throat> besides the year, there was a place for initials. Yeah, I asked him what initials he would like me to put on this. So he said his and Rebecca's. Um, so I said, okay. So Long Dog has the alphabet in the chart, <clears throat> so you can customize it. But their M did not fit in the space provided. So I had to rechart it. <sighs> Me, rechart. Mm. Um, so I can show you my work because it's my work. I had to figure out what my boundaries were. So I've got a piece of graph paper. I had to figure out what the boundaries are in that section. 
and I had to somewhat replicate what the R would look like though. There was a thicker section and a, a thinner section. But in what they, um, I guess, charted, it, it was way too wide. Like I said, it wouldn't finish, but I did it and it worked. So I was very happy. And what I did was then I, I stitched the M and everything under here came back and did everything in here. So all I have is this section right here to complete, which is this animal and that and, and that, and it'll be done. So this hopefully will be done this year. Like I said, I don't know if it'll be the next rotation or the one after that. Let me get back a little bit so it's in camera. And I just love this piece. I love that hand on the bottom, like, oh, about to make a move. And this is stitched on a 28 count white Lugana with 403 anchor black. is a nice uh, long dog to if if anybody's interested in I mean if you're interested in number one chess or somebody you know but it's also a nice one because it's not heavily densely stitched sections of a lot of black like there's a lot of white spaces in here and I think that would help for somebody new to stitching long dogs. You know, I was always, like I saw death by cro uh, cross stitch by them and oh, how do people do that? And But when I started with Templar Prophecy, I was so excited about it because I think it was, I was excited about it as also because my son wanted it. And he, he liked the pattern, he liked, um, and he was willing to, like, because he liked, so I, I did it, um, the Templar Prophecy one, and it's hanging in his living room right now. So um, I think that was great motivation, too. Somebody wants something, and you want to make it for them. So I think um, next year is going to be a, a lot of that in my um, stitching, who I can give it to, who can wants to remember me. <laughs> Uh, the next one is Little House Needleworks Spring ABCs. This was a new start. And I chose it because I couldn't find anything that I wanted to use for the letter I. So there's an I in the alphabet. So this is just a one day start. And I just started. That's where I got them. Oh, and this is a, I think it's, let me see, did I write it down? 16 count, little boy blue Ada. I, I, I know they do it on a like beige fabric, but it's, to me, spring is the start of color. So I decided to do it on blue. Hoping I'm not making too much noise for you. Look, the pile is. And there's more. I didn't realize like three weeks of stitching can be so much. Okay, the next one is Mirabilia Under the Friendship Tree. And I was just plugging along on the border um, for a long time. And it's just 20 stitches and then switch a color, 20 stitches, stitch a color. But I finished the border and then I moved the Q-snap and I got a little bit of the top done of the tree. Now, I don't know if those are apples, cherry blossoms. I, I would think they're apples, but they have a white center. Could that be just like the shine in them? I'm not one to read. It might tell me in here. Okay, I'll read it the next time and see if it says something. So this is, I finished the border around 
and I did that upper corner. It doesn't look like much, but that's a lot of stitching. And I'm stitching this on a 28 count cinnamon roll, two threads over two. I chose this for the letter Z. Some things I remember. And I pretended there were some zinnias in here. Who's to argue? It's my, my flowers. I was gonna say there's some there's zinnias in here. This is stitched on a 28 count white chocolate Lugana. I was pretty happy with the progress I made. Uh, I, this stem and one petal was here. So I finished this whole block. I think it was it this one. One of these I did. And then I went back and started. I think I did this one. And then I went back and started this. So I still have a while a ways to go. Now, you know, a lot of people would say, well, <clears throat> I'm gonna do one a month and I'll finish it next year. But the thing is, because I do a two day rotation, will I finish something this large in two days? I don't know. So I can't say that for the month of January, I'm going to finish that block because of my two day rotation. And so I know some of you might be saying, well, stitch on it three days, stitch on it four days until you get it done. The only problem with that is I would have less things to show in a video. And I know, I guess I do what I like to see. Like I like when people have um, a lot of projects to do that, or that they've done and they share their progress with you. And then I'm always amazed, like how did they accomplish that? Um, Stitching Faye, who's Heidi, um, and Stitching Faye is her YouTube channel. And uh, Dina, cross, half, half stitch, cross stitch. Dina, um, videotapes every day and then puts it all together. So there's always so much to see. And they get so much accomplished that I'm just blown away. Then this one I shared in my last video, um, Be Happy by So Much to Love. Put the number on a sticker on here. Yes, yeah, So Much to Love. And I had sh shared with you like my white stitches I did not like. I so I pulled them all out and I did it with one strand of white. And it, the word I was trying to look get was transparent. Like these wings are a little bit transparent. So being that I just did it with one thread instead of the two, I'm happier with the way they came out. And I'm going to either put um, a charm here. Of if I have a bee or a flower or something, I'll do that. And then I'll finish it into a little pillow. So I'm thrilled to be done with this one. And um, I'll talk about my plans a little bit later of what I'm planning to do for 2024. Then I took out Liberty's Welcome by Plum Street. I don't think I got much accomplished on this. This is being stitched on a 28 count Heritage Lugana. I don't know, um, oh, fluff. I worked on the house basically. Um, I, I did the two rows, the rows under the roof. I think that's what I did. I just, that's all I got accomplished that night. And here's the piece. This will be the width of it. And I don't know if I got to the bottom. I think I did. So um, I think the next time I pick it up, I will be working on the house.
And this, this one I remember also was for the letter F um, for a February, no, no, this is not F. This was for, never mind. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, the brain doesn't work when you're when you're videotaping. Let me tell you, I hear I've heard a number of floss tubers say that that um, you know you you know what you want to say you you have it all planned out you've written it down somewhere. <laughs> then when the time comes for you to talk about it, you're like, uh, it's just like what I remember in I didn't know that you can change your your, like when they capture a picture to put on your YouTube channel. In the beginning, I didn't know I had the option of changing. I don't know if there was an option. And then somehow I found it. And usually I'm at with my mouth open and like, I'm like, I wouldn't want to watch her either. <sighs> so anyway, the next one I worked on was Stony Creek. No, no, that's the Cornwall Cottage by Rosewood Manor. This will be with me for a number of years. This is being stitched, I believe, on a 16 count white Ada that I bought in the tube. I washed it and it got really, really soft. And I like it taut in my Q-snap. So what I did was I brought over the border some. I stitched the inside of this flower, brought this over, and this one. So this is what it looks like so far. It'll be large because I really haven't turned the corner down here, but close. And this is being stitched two threads over one. A 16 count white Ada. And I did try, <clears throat> if you're new to my channel, I did try one thread over one, but I did not like the coverage with one thread. So I just decided then to do the two threads over one. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, put this back in here. Then, picked up Rabbit Valley Studio Spring Doxology. I've seen a number of people do this in the springtime, but, oh, here's where my piece of batting went. And I finished it. It has to be ironed, it was on the Q-snap. But praise God from whom all blessings flow. And I love the little colors. Now, some of the pinks they wanted me to do were a little, like the inside of this heart, they wanted me to do the flowers, I think it was. And I don't, because it was such a light fabric, I didn't want, I wanted something that showed up better. So this is an, I think it's 14 count Ada. And I think it's ivory. There are no tags on it. But it is um, Surge, so I might have picked it up at Needleworkers. I'm not really sure. My friend Alva came over with some uh, stitching things for me as well. Some fabric and patterns. Okay, the next one was Hello Spring by Blushing... I know, Blushing Pink Stitches, Lindsay. And I decided to just do Spring. She also came out with Hello Autumn, which she's showing on her video and on her Instagram page. Same name, Stitching Pink. Blushing Pink Stitches. And I finished this. This was on a small piece of leftover fabric. Um, I don't know the name of it but it's on like a blue. So what I had to do to finish this time when I picked it up was the outlining on the letter G 
and the little chicks coming out of the eggs. I think this is adorable. I think I'm gonna, I haven't decided. I'm thinking of a pillow with some bright spring colors or I might do a flat fold. I don't know, I haven't decided. This might not be finished until like spring fabrics come out because I want it to be springy. And I know sometimes I'll have fabrics in the store, but usually when it's a hot, you know, the season, that's what's more prevalent in the store. So anyway, so here's my September monthly. So I did get a lot accomplished. Well, I touched a lot of things. I get a lot accomplished, not all the time. Okay, today's the last month in the last month, the last day of the month. So I will be, um, I stitched something yesterday and today's the second day that I will share with you in the next video. So I was, <laughs> I thought this was quite, I don't know, some things are funny to me and something are pain to me, but this was kind of funny in that I found this receipt from Joanne's. And I'm like, what did I buy? Of course, everybody knows what I bought. DMC. And they scan every one of them. So, um, and I only paid 33 cents. And they were originally 52. So they were on sale. So naturally, I took advantage of that. And I says, what is the date of this? 4-28-18. So I hadn't been stitching too long. So I think um, when, when Joanne's would have a, a sale, I would pick a number a group, a number uh, of like the 900 series or 800. And I would pick, buy every one that they have in there so that I can have a complete set. I think that was one of those times. And then um, I wanted to share something funny with you. First, I'll tell you that when I'm answering comments, like I, I try to answer every comment, even if it's to give it a heart or um, a thank you. And I have a friend who spells her name Arlene, A-R-L-E-N-E. -E. And then I have a viewer who's a friend who spells her name A-R-L-E-E-N. So I know every time I spell it that way, the phone changes it to the other way. Then I have to go back and retype it again. And sometimes it does it again, but most of the times just once. So um, I was... One, and I, I think I told the person about it, but I caught it. I was typing and it was like winter time. And I says, oh, I just hate the winter. And I meant to write and all the icy conditions. And when I, a lot of times I don't read what I write because I'm in a hurry to go to the next one. Luckily I read that one because it said, um, and I don't like icy condoms. When I read that, uh, that made me laugh. So naturally I fixed it. I didn't even, you know, make comment on it in writing anywhere. But I thought that was very funny. I thought I'd share it with you because sometimes we do need laughs in our lives. Okay, giveaway winners. If you're with me to the end, I hope you did stay to hear about the giveaway winners. The first one, number one, was um, called Tied with Heartstrings by Brenda Gervais. And the person who won this is Debbie, D-E-B-I, Sisk, S-I-S-K. The second one, number two, was Little House Needleworks Quilt Time Sampler. And the winner is Mary Bergman. Um, if you are one of the winners, please be 18 years or older and I will put my Instagram and email account downstairs downstairs down in the down drop down menu um, for you to send me your address uh, I will not be commenting because I heard there are people that comment on other people's videos about you're a winner and they want information from you so I will not be doing that I expect you to contact me to send me your address. Um, number three was Sleigh Bells Pink Keep and Ornament by Marlene Zagar. Zagar? Z-A-G-A-R? No. And the fourth one is 
Christmas garden sampling and it's called Christmas Sampler. And that is Sean in AZ. I think that's Arizona. Uh, okay. So those are the four winners that we had. So I'll wait to uh, get your mailing address and I will mail that out to you. So plans, <clears throat> not plans for next month. Next month is just to do like the monthly acrostic in the magazine monthly challenge, which in I haven't finalized, but the words are self care. And like I said, the 24 hours will post sometime today or tonight. So what I've been doing, so my D, friend Dee came up with 12 new ornaments in 12 months. So of course I had to come up with 13 in 12 months. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what I do is, this is how I start planning. I'll show you my messy chicken scratch. First, I started with 12 ornaments in 2024. And then I had some alternatives. Then I decided to make a list of everything I wanted to start in 2024. Then I went back and said, okay, which of the 12? Then I said, I have to have 13 because I need to get this one in. And then which are the ornaments that I need for my grandchildren? And these tick marks mean that I like I double check and check again. And, and I learned that um, I couldn't add sometimes. Um, I had a, a Zoom call with Dina, Donna, and Dee. And we were talking about certain plans and how many starts they're going to start. And Dina said she had 40 starts for the new year. So I said, oh, I have 30. She goes, you need 10 more. So I was like, oh. So back to the drawing board. Um, so I chose 10 other projects. So I had 13. I had 20, let's see what made 30, 23, I don't remember. I have, I have like, my brain is fried today. So anyway, 24 new starts, wrote them all here, but it ended, uh, for 2024, I had 27 new starts and these are all of them on the page up to 27 not in the order of the, which I plan on starting them so I had them all here and then I had the 13 ornaments that I would want to get done so now I'm saying well how many do I have to start per month so then I started another piece of scrap paper and I January through December and I said, okay, so January, I'll start these. And I started plotting them all in. Let's see, the most I've had, I guess is in April of a new start because that's my birthday month. So I don't know, I feel like I wanna start certain ones on my birthday. My new year, new start. Now, I know a lot of people say on January 1st, they start something new or they, um, but I just, I could never start it on January 1st. Usually we're hosting. And by the time they, they all leave, there's no stitching done. Well, could it be done the next day? If there's no school and kids are with their parents and not me, maybe. <laughs> but my very first one that I will start in January 2024 is Angel of Light by um, Lavender and Lace. I kitted it up and I just feel like I want to do that. So, so those, are, and I will, besides just showing this and telling you what they are, I will pull them out. I might do the ornaments separate, not to have you sit through 40 kitted up projects. I will maybe break it up into the ornament new starts for 2024. Ornaments meaning any holiday ornament or anything under six by six. That was the um, guidelines. And the other one would be the 27 new starts of regular stitching. And this way, if you would like to start anything that you might have in your stash that I already have or that I will be stitching, 
we can have a start along. I'm not gonna say a stitch along because I'm not too good at stitch alongs, but I am good at start alongs. Okay, all right, that's everything as far as stitching. I, I haven't done any quilting, though uh, it's in my head what I wanna do. I just, like everybody else, but there's not enough hours in a day. But I'll give it a life update and then I will uh, head out. And anybody that wants to say goodbye right now, thank you so much for stopping in. I will do a video of a peer. Somebody asked for that as well. Instead of taking them all down and holding them up, I think I'll get back up on the ladder and tell you what each one is and, um, and go from there. So, um, family update. We were together on the 8th, 8th of September. And I was planning to have a stitch up meeting that the next day at Wegmans. Unfortunately, I couldn't attend. Um, uh, Michael had a wedding shoot and Rebecca had the kids, all three of them by herself on a Saturday. And he asked if I could go over and give a hand. Of course, I'm going to do that. Um, so I didn't get to go to the meetup. I heard they had lots of fun. Wegmans was the perfect place. They're doing it again in October. I'm hoping to be able to make that one. But if life gets in the way, life gets in the way. Family first. Um, but I, right now, I'm hoping to be there. And so that was one thing. Then we were to host Caleb's birthday party here, uh, which I was so looking forward to because my mother-in-law was going to see the twins that she hadn't seen, oh gosh, in a number of months, a number of months, um, because part one of the time she was out here in the summer, Libby had just come out of the hospital and there were too many people here for her to be around and it was just too soon. Um, so it's been a while since she had seen her, but unfortunately a few people got sick, uh, and tropical storm Ophelia came through. So we had to cancel and it was disappointing, um, uh, to say the least, but you know, we'll do it again. We'll, we were having cousins over as well. And we were hoping to do it outside. And then as the weather was saying it was going to rain, we said, okay, we will bring everybody inside. But then who was getting sick, who was, um, and then the storm and who had a drive from New York, we, we just, Michael and Rebecca thought it best that we just cancel at that point, and which we did. And we're, I don't want to say cancel, postpone. So hopefully sometime in September, October, um, we'll be able to get everybody together and fingers crossed that will work out. Um, Gianna was, is attending nursery school and now she was able to get into the JCC, the Jewish community center where her mom works in her, in their, um, nursery school program. So that works out a lot better for Amy. Um, Talia comes here because she's too young to be put into daycare yet. So she comes here and she's so sweet. Um, let's see, what did she turn? Six months. So yeah, six months this month. So she started eating food and she's such a happy baby, always laughing and smiling and she pouts. Um, and she gives you the raspberry too. So uh, they're, they're doing well. And Michael and Rebecca's, that's Jamie and Amy's children. Michael and Rebecca's, uh, Caleb is in nursery school, <laughs> daycare nursery school. Um, he's in nurse daycare, no, nursery school. He's in nursery school three times a week. Um, and I have his twin sisters and him on Tuesdays and Thursdays under normal circumstances. The last three weeks, I've had them a lot. And um, it's fine. Layla is crawling. Uh, we have her in a walker, so she's walking back and forth and teething like crazy. We go through bibs like you can't imagine. <laughs> um, so she's doing well. Libby is doing well. Um, she's growing. Um, 
<laughs> we, my husband says, I think she's bigger than Layla. Uh, when you hold them, like you lay them down next to each other, they look pretty similar now in, in, um, in body weight and stuff. So she has no, she doesn't have muscle tone like a normal child. She, she can move her arms, she kicks her legs. Um, so she is getting, getting there, but, um, basically you have to position her a lot of times if you're trying to hold her up or this way. And so Libby had gotten sick and she got whooping cough and we're all vaccinated for that. And she must've picked it up when she was in the hospital. Maybe we don't know. Um, but everybody was vaccinated with it. Um, you have to be, if you're going to be around small children now. So anyway, so she, and she was vaccinated. So anyway, they, they diagnosed it as whooping cough. So it's a cough and that has a lot of phlegm and mucus. So she's on her feeding tube, but if she gets really upset and cries and then she starts coughing, everything comes up, which is good and not good. She's not getting the nutrition nutrients that she needs, but she's getting rid of all the mucus. So, um, some days she doesn't. And then some days, like she, one day she vomited twice here. Um, and once my husband was just holding her and like not rocking her or anything, just holding her to keep her from crying. Cause she does cry a bit and she just vomited and, you know, so so she vomited two day, two times in one day, and then she went home, had another feeding, and vomited again. So it's, I guess, it's just a matter of time of it getting through her system. And because she doesn't move much, <clears throat> we always want to make sure her lungs are clear. So Michael and Rebecca take her to the doctor, and the last time they took her, they said her lungs are crystal clear. So where all this bile and mucus is coming from? I don't, I don't know. Bile is that the right word? Mucus. Um, and, and yeah, so it's, it's a rough and they don't sleep well. Uh, she does sometimes get sick in the middle of the night and, or they have a feeding for her. And then Layla has been getting up quite a bit, not sleeping well. And Caleb sometimes wakes up in the middle of the night and crawls into bed with them too. So, and the dog. So they they truly have their hands full and I am totally amazed at how they are handling it with such grace and poise and not complaining. Um, I give them a lot of credit. We were going to try and take Layla um, this week to sleep over since she wasn't sleeping well. But one day she started coughing and I was afraid that it might get in, turn into something more so at night. But um, she was okay. And then we were going to take her last night. And then Sal started not feeling well. And, and um, luckily, we did not keep her. Uh, Rebecca took her home with her when she picked up Libby. And uh, Sal was really sick last night. He went to bed. I, I don't even think. I think it was before 8. And during the night, he had a coughing fit. And he's back in bed now. So I have to put on my nurse's uniform. <laughs> No, I better not do that. <laughs> um, but as far as nurses go, I, this is as much I want to say. I always said, like, I had a special, like, I felt like nurses are such special people, especially good nurses. I know there's, like, not good people in every every facet of life, but a good nurse is something that I, like, I bow down to them because... They do so much for a patient. And I said, I could never, ever be a nurse because I don't have that in me. But God tested me. I feel he did when my mother got ill. She, she passed from a brain, uh, brain cancer. And we had nurses come in, but when they weren't available, I was the first person my father called to come and change her and take care of her. Um, and those were things that I thought I could never do, but you learn that you can. So, um, and then with Libby, with a feeding tube, how was I going to do that? 
attach it to her like there's a little part in her stomach and then a tube and then another feeding tube so we have to attach all these things to her um yeah and i'm sure my children didn't think about giving their children injections every day so you know never say you can't do anything because you can that's all i'm going to say so um, we also found out that Libby's, since we were together, Libby's um, hip operation will be on November 13th. Their birthdays will be are November 23rd. I think, I believe that's thanks. Oh, I know it's Thanksgiving Day. Yes, Thanksgiving Day. Um, <clears throat> and then Libby has to go out to Columbus, Ohio again in... December. It was supposed to be in February, but um, they got a call. They spoke with the doctor out there, and the doctor says when um, there's trials and things like that, they need to, the government wants them to be seen more often. So um, I think the genetic doctor will see them this month here in New Jersey, and then December 27th, they go to um, Ohio again to be seen there and I guess some testing done and see how she's doing and and take it from there. Right now she gets two injections. After her first birthday, it's supposed to go to one. Okay, so I think that's everything I wanted to share with you. I hope anybody who stayed to the end, thank you very much for listening to me and hearing about everything that I've shared. Um, feel free to ask any questions. And I'll do my best in answering them. And if it needs an explanation, I'll try to do it there. And then I'll try and mention it in my next video. So you're saying, so when's your next video, Lori? Well, I'm going to try and do it within two weeks. That's the plan. And um, I'll do a short one for this wall. And maybe I'll do a short sec section of what I have downstairs and put it together if I could do that <laughs> I did do it once or twice where I had to go back and do a section and I put it together um, what I haven't mastered is it putting it in between um, like as a video is going and I say put it here and then try to put it there I can't I haven't mastered that one <clears throat> but I think I can put it at the end so if I can do that I'll try to uh, show you my fall finishes that I have around the house and up here. Alrighty, so until next time, guys, thank you so much for being with me and sharing your thoughts with me and sending all the love and prayers that you have and staying with me to the end. So take care, love you, Mwah. until next time, bye.